सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस इन सिमुलेशन एंड गेमिंग एट श्री वैष्णव विद्यापीठ विश्वविद्यालय इंदौर इंडिया इन एसोसिएशन विद इंटरनेशनल सिमुलेशन एंड गेमिंग एसोसिएशन इसागा This center of excellence in simulation and gaming is established to promote simulation and gaming as pedagogy to undertake research in this upcoming multidisciplinary area of interest. I Dr Aditi Veer on behalf of Sri Vaishnav Vidyapeeth Vishwavidyalaya fraternity would like to heartily welcome our speaker Dr Toshiko Kikawa professor Kyoto University Japan honorable vice chancellor Dr Upinder Dar coordinator center of excellence in simulation and gaming dr jigyasu dubey invited guest eminent panel members participants and dear friends students today's webinar under the pratiti is on the topic subtle manipulation games and the resource person is dr toshiko kikawa she is a professor at uh, kyoto university japan May I now invite Dr. Upinder Dar, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Sri Vaishnav Vidyapeeth Vishwavidyalaya, Indore, and President Isaga 2021-22 for the welcome address. Good afternoon from India to all of you. I hope that everybody is keeping well and in sound health. as uh, you know that every month we are organizing this webinar which is a series that we started uh, about a few months back and all our friends have come forward to present these um, uh, webinars to enrich our knowledge exchange the views exchange the uh, knowledge uh, between us uh, exchange the understanding between us and i'm sure that this process will continue so we had uh, very effective speakers in the past paula has already done it and now this is the turn this time of toshiko so i'm sure that by the time this uh, webinar will be over today we will be much richer in our understanding about simulation and game so not falling into formalities and taking much of time i know i know everybody is very eager to listen to us so once again welcome to all of you thank you very much thank you sir for giving a warm welcome so before starting let me give the audience a brief introduction about dr toshiko she is a phd kyoto university and is a professor at kyoto university japan She is a social psychologist and specializes in risk communication and simulation and gaming. She has been a vice chair of Japanese Association of Simulation and Gaming since 2015. She is also the executive board member of International Simulation and Gaming Association from 2012 to 2016. Since 2010, she has been a co-editor in the chief of the journal Simulation and Gaming since 2021. I welcome her for the webinar and request her to start the session. So thank you very much for the introduction, uh, Dr. Dal and Dr. Veda. So now I will share my screen. Shall I start now? Okay. Yes, please. So can you see my screen? Okay. So I will talk about subtle manipulation in games. Especially, I would like to focus. There's a time we see all. Oh. What? Something is is something is wrong? Is it? No, okay? carry on. Please carry on. <laughs> we see all. Okay. So um, today I. mainly focus on the subtle manip manipulation in games especially um of the that of educational games so um i have two key points of today's presentation one is games can be used for many educational purposes and also for fun 
However, the second point is, however, at the same time, we have to be careful for the subtle manipulation contained in games, whether intentionally or unintentionally. By the way, today's talk, my, my, talk, my talk, today's talk is based on that chapter of this book, Gaming as a Cultural Commons, Risks, Challenges, and Opportunities. So if you want to know the content of my talk in detail, please read this book and my chapter as well, please. So uh, first of all, I would like to think, up, think about the uh, classic educational games or experiential learning. I think many of you know the, these classic um, experiential running games. Is it okay? Do you know blue, blue eyes and brown eyes? It's a game, ga game, not a game. Running, um, it's a kind of experiential running that which run, whose running purpose is prejudice reduction. It, it, it is two days um, experience and developed by the uh, uh, elementary school teacher in the late 1960s. And I hope you, most of you also know the this game. Um, this game is also very frequently used in our community. The learning purpose is cultural differences. These um, educational games or experiential learning are very effective. But now from the um, from the perspective of modern time, I mean the 21st century, they contain some ethical issues. They are too close to real life ex experiences because they are experiential. So they contain discrimination or exclusion in the games or uh, exercises. So in the 21st century, we have to consider or re-evaluate re the value of these classic games, which were considered effective, but may contain some um, problems from this part, from uh, current perspective. In addition to the classic games, games played for fun is also used for educational purposes now. I, um, I wonder if you know the very popular fun game, where wolf? Do you know them? Do you know the game? Can I ask Julius to know if you know the game or not? Shall I explain the game or? Shall yes, please, Toshiko, just okay. briefly. <laughs> okay, just briefly. In this game, players compete between minority and majority. Minority is for uh, wolves, and majority is the villagers. And the game contains two phases. 
night and days, nights and days. At night, Baruch kill one of the villagers, and uh, at the day session, um, prayers deduce who is the who is the werewolf and identify the their identities because the the prayers identities are not known to all of the prayers at the first phase. The, so to win the game, they need deductive skills and communication. So it can be used for the um, for improving communication skills. The game is like this. This is night phase. Most of the players close their eyes and only werewolf know the werewolves know the their identities and kill one villagers. This is the day phase. So as you can see at this photo, prayers can discuss, I will, I will discuss the who is the werewolf in the group. And the, if the, uh, if the, the um, deduction is correct, the prayer is eliminated. Also the, uh, villages uh, who killed at night are eliminated the game. So um, communication is a key to win the game for the both sides. So it is frequently used for the uh, educational purpose to improve communication skills. The game is very popular uh, all over the world. Japan is no exception. So uh, there are a lot of events to play these games um, in Japan. But I would like to point out potential downsides of this game. When night, the night phase, when in the night phase, at the night phase, the werewolf kill the one or one villagers, or at a day session at they face one of the suspected uh, barrow is hanged by the villagers. So the terms used again, like killing and hanging or excuse, it may have negative con connotations. It is not suitable for the educational uh, situation. And also I would like to point out that in the early stage of the game, there are no crew who, um, no crew for who are the werewolves and who were the villagers. That is, there is no crews for the identity of the players. So in the very early stage of the game, Players who have salient characteristics could be targets of suspected werewolves. Like, for example, um, if there is only one female player in the male players, she can be uh, victims at the day session. 
or someone who has some physical characteristics, like um, who has a scar or some physical disabilities can be a victim. That is a very problematic thing, I think. Third, people who were relatively silent during the prey could be victims because it's a kind of uh, cryptic behavior. So who, uh, those who are silent during the early phase are excluded from, from the game. That means she or he cannot um, improve the communication skills through the game. I'd like to uh, point out other concrete examples of the game. Like Ravuf, can games can be used for educational use, even if they are developed for fun, only for fun. However, we must scrutinize the winning conditions of the games, which is closely connected to the purpose of the education. Of course, when we have uh, some lectures or lessons and during the lectures, we may use games. We have certain objective or purpose of education. But that is not that that does not mean that we persuade or we manipulate students from pupils. So before we use the game, we have to scrutinize the winning conditions. For example, I think all of you know the game and played a game of life in the childhood. No, okay. Um, it is a kind of roulette, so it's, on surface, it's like a chance game, but as many times as many times as you play games, you may learn that it is necessary to buy insurance or to go to school or go to some professional training is necessary in the early stage of the game to win the game. So it's very educational in the sense that early stage education or to buy insurance is very important for life. It, it is implicitly um, teach the prayers, the how to deal with the life or how to win the life. I would like to use a second example. I think you, most of you play Monopoly in the childhood, okay? In the Monopoly, the winning condition is to get as many real estates as possible. So the game teaches prayers. Uh, getting real estate is very important for life. 
probably, probably. There may, might be the objection, but to win the game, they have, they learn, they learn that real, having this real estate is very important. Also, traditional games have been frequently used for propaganda purpose in Japan. I would like to introduce you some uh, two traditional Japanese games, which I think um, most of you don't know the rules of the games. One is Goroku. It's like uh, snake and radars or game of the goose, and it is it uses a linear race track along with which players race by throwing dice. It's it's very popular traditional Japanese game. It has frequently been used for educational purposes, as well as a, as played for fun, because. Information can be added on the squares of the game, game board, like Monopoly. So in the World, World War II, World War II time, Japanese government very frequently used this game frame for propaganda. This is a game for uh, elementary school children to teach how the Japanese military struggled in the war and at last they won, which is not true. Because Japanese military struggles in the war, but they lost and lost and lost. But when they, when children play the game, children learned that Japanese military are wi were winning. And some of the boys, or many of the boys, want to be, want to join the military in the future. This is also the same. Uh, uh, the, uh, this is also Sugoroku for elementary school children. It explains how Japanese military expanded in Asia. So, which is not true in reality, the Japan was losing many places, in many places, but uh, for Jap Japanese children at that time believes that Japanese military are, were winning. I would like to um, introduce another traditional Japanese game for propaganda uses because traditional game is very convenient for propaganda purpose because um, it doesn't need uh, explanation of the rules because all of us know the rules already. The second example is card. It's a, a card game played with a deck of cards. The deck consists of two types of cards, reading cards and grabbing cards. Reading cards are read by a re reader, and players find as quickly as possible corresponding, corresponding grab cards among the cards spring on the floor, spread on the floor. So it's a kind of memory game. It, this is a patriotism character at the World War II time. For example, if the reading card is contribution to the 
country is important, the grabbing card should be yes. So the association contribution to the country is important and yes, it's to increase the children's patriotism. So these kind of games are used for many occasions and played by the children. Also, I'd like to uh, introduce a German board game, which is also used in the World War II time. German, this is a German board game, which tells children to avoid shopping at Jewish shops. This is a very simple dice game, so people, children can easily play the game and learn to avoid shopping at Jewish shops. I introduced three um, concrete cases used in the World War II, but propaganda is not history. For example, this is a counter Japan Atomic Energy Agency uses, used before Fukushima accident. For example, this tells to emit radiation. That means uh, radiation is not so um, fearful thing. And nuclear energy is very important. Also, they made a uh, Sugoroku games for propaganda. Um, they want to promote uh, the nuclear fuel cycle before Fukushima accident. So they made uh, this kind of user-friendly game for propaganda use. So if you be careful, such a manipulation of games are used in the 21st century. We must be careful to guard against manipulation using games whose true purpose, which may be hidden. So games which involve, involves, involve manipulation that operates in more refined or subtle way. And games which involves manipulation that is unintentionally put into practice by facilitators, teachers is also a risk of using games for educational purpose. Even if game is educational on surface, surface, we must be careful when using it. For example, SDG is a very important um, objective for all over the world now. But SDG game can be used for evil purpose if they are used by some evil groups. There is a, a possibility. We have to we have to consider the possibility at all times. So when we use Again, games for education, 
we should ask ourselves the following things to ourselves. First, I introduced um, brown eyes and blue eyes and brown eyes exercises. And I see, I pointed out this some ethical apprehension for these games. So if there are alternative games that can be used to teach the same pedagogical goal, if there is any doubt regarding the ethical issues of an existing game, these, uh, this is a question to be asked to ourselves. If there is a alternative game that can be used without stressing the participants, we can use that game instead of the classic but stressful games. And also we must scrutinize the rules of the games, especially the conditions of the winning from the perspective that they could be used intentionally to manipulate participants. So um, for, at the beginning of my talk, I pointed out the risk of manipulation intentionally or unintentionally. Intentional pro, um, manipulation is very obvious and can be detected easily. But subtle manipulation or unintentional manipulation is very difficult to be detected. So I would like to emphasize on um, when we use the games for educational, uh, in, in the educational setting, especially we have to scrutinize the conditions of winning. That is the object, object, objective of, the, of our educational purpose. That the conditions of winning is what the, key, what the participant or students learn from the game. So that is what I want to say today. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, ma'am. So now, now I would like to request our participants if they have any question for the speaker. Thank you, Toshiko. It, it's Elizabeth. Uh, uh, you've raised some really vital issues. Yeah. I, I guess I would say on the other side of the scale is that all education in some way has the potential to be manipulative. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what I am hearing and really valuing from you today is how important it is for games users and designers to be aware of, of how the games they're using have that potential to manipulate. Yeah. Okay. Then for me, there is, so you've mentioned games like Bafa Bafa, um, yeah. where the, the manipulation is both highly intentional and directed. Yeah. Um, that is, it, it is meant to bring out the player's uh, potential for uh, in internalized prejudices. Yeah. Whereas some of the board games yeah. are, are really meant to only impose the designer's prejudices. Yes. So it's for me, it's about two kinds of manipulation yeah. that you are raising for me. This issue of 
Sometimes it is intentional uh, in order to have the learner see for themselves, but sometimes it is intentional and in order to sort of push something on to the player. So for me, a question that is emerging is, is what do users of games need to know to be able to distinguish between, if you like, the ends of that spectrum? when I'm doing something deliberately for learning or yeah. doing something deliberately to impose. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so thank, thank you for asking me. Um, for taking the example of Baha Baha, mm-hmm. it's a very good game for te- uh, teaching uh, cultural mm. craft or experiencing the exclusion. As, so many of the uh, professional facilitators who are members of ISAGA mm-hmm. or teachers who knows games well are uh, aware of the risk of using a game. So um, what I'm Afraid of is that Baha Baha is so popular and well known, and the many teachers recommend the Baha Baha as a good educational game. So, mm-hmm. novice, I I would like to say, facilitators jump or catch the game without mm-hmm. the proper proper knowledge of facilitation. So in that case, it's a, for the professional facilitators, it's a kind of balance or benefit of education and benefit of um, stress on the participants or players. We professional facilitators or game um, con- conductors know the balance and mm-hmm. before we do that, we do that, we consider the balance. Is it worth playing it, or we, is there any alternative that has less stressful game to teach students cultural crush like balunga? Mm-hmm. So it's obvious, but the, in the case of propaganda. That is very, very difficult to um, detect. Mm -hmm. So you raise a very good thing. It's a. um, What I'm hearing. Depends on the uh, facilitators. Yes, yes, that is that is what I'm hearing you say. It is about the professional capabilities. Yeah. Of of facilitators yeah. and, and and of what it is required to be and, and to become that professional facilitator. Yeah. And and yes, that does mean I and I, I agree with you totally. It does yeah. mean being aware of both your student group and the nature of the game. And, yeah. and that is that is a big learning task, yeah. I find. Um, that sometimes Teachers will, like you mentioned, blue eyes, brown eyes. And my problem with that is that when she first ran that, she did do, you know, blue eyes are better and brown eyes aren't, and then the following day reversed it so that everybody had that experience. But then when she brought the process to Australia, people were put into the blue eyes, brown eyes group but didn't have the chance to reverse. Yeah. And I found that a, a, a heading in the direction of your manipulation. It, it was kind of a brilliant design, but but no longer being used well. And yet, you know, today she was, she has written recently that, you know, the, the game is still as important, like that, that process of understanding how we make judgments and, and that often they are not based on fact. Um, is as important as as it ever was. So 
it, it's, it, it is about increasing our professional capability as facilitators. Yeah. And I think you've raised some really important points around. And, yeah. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much and for your comment. And I think in the case of Elliot, who developed blue eyes, brown eyes, mm -hmm. she knew her pupil very well. Yes. So she could do it. So it depends yes. on, partially depends on the relationship between the teacher and the pupil. Mm, very much. Yeah. So I think, so I would like to add to my point, facility, mm. professional, professional ability of the facilitators is important. And also the participant and facilitators relationship is yeah, also important. Yeah. yeah. And Paula has her hand up. <laughs> Thank you for waiting. Thank you so much, uh, Toshiko. Uh, as, as usual, this is a quite bright, brilliant, bright, let's say, um, uh, presentation about an issue that is not really a secondary one. It's not really, um, but is really, how to say, under considered. I mean, Mm. It is not so considered when we play. We, we, we talk a lot about how successful is playful is our game. Uh, what was the first immediate reaction? What was the first briefing? But this, the second and third level of the briefing is always forgotten. Being someone that is uh, working, sometimes using the same games, Werewolf is one of my favorite, for instance, I'm not using for communication. I'm using to learn how miscommunication can guide to, let's say, bad choices. Yeah. And, um, and uh, that brings to me uh, to one aspect that is also not taken into consideration and is also mixed. I'm not a pedagogist, I'm not a psychologist, mm -hmm. but I think that sometimes pedagogical, uh, how say, issue and, and, and themes are confused with ethical. I mean, or they are forgotten. I don't know how to say. So we are more keen to transfer some knowledge, let's say how to do something through the, the process of the game and less to what is the ethical concept. That, means that you, what you said already with, uh, with Elizabeth, balance, uh, be aware, uh, be about the context, etc. One thing that is often neglected in this kind of the game is for instance, for me, the role of gender. Yeah. Gaming simulation are often designed for male, for, 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 for guys, for, for, for boys, not for yeah. girls. That doesn't mean that the, the girls have to play with dolls and, and pink mm. ribbon, not at all. Yeah. But they don't take into consideration some aspect or some differences in this. So my, my question for you um, is, I'm not talking about the professional. I'm not, because I assume that ethically, this is, must be clear about that, ethically, a professional designer and a professional facilitator must know all these things, must know how to debrief and facilitate. But I'm worrying, I'm worrying about the not professional. Yeah. For instance, a teacher that is enthusiastic and use mm -hmm. werewolf or buffa buffa for the first time. And being in this time, and this is the second, and, and so the question is, what is your suggestion about it? What is your thought about it? How we can help the non-professional to enter properly in this, in this world or use properly the games or how designer can, can, let's say, can improve their design, look into this. And uh, the second one that is for me quite interesting now is the propaganda. Mm -hmm. 
the so-called, you know, everybody that knows me here, I know I'm not popular in it. I don't like the terms gamification because mm. terms implies some industrialization, McDonaldization of the word, you know, reply quickly without thinking. Mm. And this is something that is a subtle manipulation. And I've seen more and more in citizens' participation, for instance, to use the game as a pretext to, I mean, pretext, assumption that is talking about democracy, but is not, it's just, you know, involved in some process. So what do you think about, what is your suggestion for me, for instance, as designer? Okay, so, so much. Uh, thank you very much. For the, your first question, um, we professionals have to have a kind of lecture for the teachers how to use a game. Because games are so playable and probably very fun instead of the lectures. So teachers want to use the games for in, in their classes. So before they introduce games into their classes, we have to have, we as a professionals have to ha um, have a kind of lecture for teachers, how to use education, games educationally um, in the classes. Because, um, because of the um, user-friendly surface of games, many, in the case of Japan, many teachers want to use games in the classes. That is very risky from my point of view. So I think it's a very time consuming practice, but we have to do step by step had to have a lecture for the teachers, how to use game properly, how to select games, and how sure. to facilitate it, and how to debrief after the game. And regarding to your second question, I didn't use the uh, case of gamification, and, but I share the same apprehension with you Power because, um, for example, um, the game America's Army is a very problematic case for the gaming uh, as a game com uh, community because uh, the success of the America's Army promotes the use of game, gamification in the field. So we have to be careful in that field as well. Yes, but I agree. I have no idea now how. No, I understand. I have uh, the same concern. I'm trying my best, but I think that again, there is a misunderstanding yeah. that we think that a game can be a problem solver for everything and is standing alone. Yeah. One of the first thing that I learned from Dick Duke is that there are no bad games, there are bad <laughs> users and bad facilitators and bad, you know, the game itself is a tool, it's, it's not that, it's always used. So I agree with you, I agree with you, I have no also. It comforts me that you have, you know, yeah. you shared my same concern. Thank you so much. Thank you. So very. Thank, Thank you. you. So yeah, are yeah. there any more questions? Yeah. Um, yes, I, I would like, um, hello everybody, I'm Birgit from Stuttgart. Um, thank you so much, Toshiko, for coming up with this very, very important theme. And um, I come more from the field of business games. Mm. Yeah, as you know, maybe cap sim games, top sim games, all these 
business games. But I think it's such a, a yeah, you, you brought me to think about um, how we are manipul manipulating even with these business games because yeah. the, the, the goals of these games, they are totally profit uh, fixed, fixed mm -hmm. on profit maximization and getting um, most equity and profits and all these things, having minimized costs. But all the other themes like uh, social issues, um, what about people in, in our company? What about maybe sustainability goals? They mm -hmm. fall under the floor, as we say. Yeah. So it's it's also manipulating in a in a certain style because we are we, we are having this mindset of uh, that that profit is all. And I think it's really important as facilitators of business games yeah. to to include all these themes also, maybe with small role plays where you show how you can feel if you are fired as a, as yeah. a member or something like that. So this is our task to, yeah. to have a, a new perspective in, in these business games. And this is a very important thing, I, thing, I think, to think about. So yeah. <laughs> thanks a lot, Tajiko. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing your thought. Yeah. Business game is an uh, important area to re-innovate. Yes. <laughs> to, yes. And uh, to include social the social yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So uh, with that, as we come to the end of the webinar, may I now request Dr. Jigyasu Dubey, Coordinator, Center of Excellence in Simulation and Dreaming, Sri Vaishnav Vidya Pitvishit Dali, to propose words of thanks. Uh, uh, yeah. Be before I, uh, before I um, hear your message, I would like to have uh, some propaganda or advertisement. <laughs> In this book, there is a chapter as uh, ethics of professional facilitators. So, and also the uh, equity of gender or many things. So I recommend you to up please. Yeah, I'm I'm manipulating you. Thank you very much. So thank you, Doshiko, for wonderful uh, for the wonderful uh, webinar. Uh, I, on behalf of the Center of Excellence in Simulation in Gaming and Sri Vaishnav Vidya Pit Vishwavidyala Indore would like to give our most sincere thanks to Dr. Toshiko for accepting our invitation and giving his precious time out of his busy schedule. It, is, it was a really great experience for all of us to listen to you. Uh, the session can be summarized in two points. Games can be used for many educational purposes and also for fun. Second, however, at the same time, uh, we need to be careful for the subtle manipulation contained in games, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Once again, thanks to Dr. Toshiko for the session. Our special thanks to Dr. Upinder, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of SRPLB Indore for mentoring. Our special thanks to our panelists, Dr. Elizabeth, Dr. Kenige, Dr. Paula, Ms. Birgit, Mr. Eric, and all other panelists present and the participants who make this webinar successful. Thanks to Dr. Aditi Veda and all the members of the COESG of the university and uh, special thanks to the IT team of the university for their support. Thanks, thanks to all of you. Uh, the next webinar is scheduled on 27th August and resource person is Dr. Ramesh Sharma from India. So I request everyone to join this uh, next webinar. Hopefully all will join. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the uh, party, all of the participants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So I party. request the participants.
to please the feedback mentioned in the chat box to get the e certificates we uh, we meeting next on 27th august as sir already said with the next webinar thank you once again thank you everyone for joining thank you very thank much toshiko thank you thank you dr paula thank you dr lee okay pediko thank you goodbye thank you bye bye, bye, -bye.